Whoa, oh, what do we got here? A little Sunday morning pocket change market report action for you guys. Uh, sorry for getting this out a little bit later. Uh, just a few things going on here in the last, uh, last day or so that kind of delayed everything for me. Uh, but hey, we, we got it here for you. Uh, this is going to be a great opportunity to take a look and see what has been selling on the secondary market. As far as your standard errors and varieties that have been found in uh, pocket change, coin rolls from the bank, uh, even cherry picking from the coin shops and shows. You find it all right there. You can either add it to your collection if you're looking for that marquee piece or go ahead and sell it and uh, make some money in the process. But, you know, good way to kind of kick off the, the week. Hopefully there's uh, going to be a lot of good stuff for you here um, to get you really pumped up and amped. Uh, for what is going to be a, a really great week, especially with the brand new 2022 coins finally hitting uh, circulation. I, that's going to be one of the big key points for uh, for the coming next two weeks, I would say. Um, the, pretty much every denomination is out there. Mostly Denver minted coins uh, have been have been found in Lincoln cents, nickels, dimes, and quarters. Uh, for Philadelphia's, we've seen, I believe, nickels and I believe quarters. And that is it for now. Um, of course, finding that one first bank box that you could uh, either uh, rip and flip or just sell the box as, as it is. I think there was a uh, $500 uh, a box of the new Maya Angelou quarters that ended up selling for $1,500. So that's just a, a little bit of a taste of what you can expect for these early boxes coming out of the gate. All right, so I figure we're going to just go ahead and jump right into uh, what's the latest and greatest on eBay. These are all, of course, listings from the last 24 to 36 hours. No graded coins. Obviously, the big idea is that if you have something to sell, sell it as it is. Uh, sending coins off to be graded can cost a lot of money. I know with PCGS error attributions, uh, along with the standard submission fee, expect to pay upwards of about $100 for that one singular coin to get graded. So there are times it's just not necessary. All right. Thank you guys for joining in. Let's go ahead and jump right into the good stuff. First of all, we're going to start it off a little bit slow. You know how I like to do it. Uh, we have an off-center 1980s Lincoln Memorial scent. This one, of course, is a copper-coated Zinken. Uh, so figure 1982 and up. Is what we're looking at here. Now, as you guys know, the collectability with such coins hinges on the fact that they have a full date. Now, this one, almost there, but not quite. We could tell that it is also a Philadelphia minted coin, uh, just based off of the amount of space under the, under the date that exists on here. Uh, but this is just a 1980s Lincoln, and uh, this one actually ended up selling for $55.97. Not exactly sure what's going on here on the reverse of the coin. Uh, I don't know if this is post-mint damage or if this is also something else uh, that is a result of the minting process. I, I'm kind of leaning more toward post-mint damage, but um, this coin sold for a lot more money uh, than I think what's deserved based off of that anomaly on the reverse of the coin. But if you do come across something like this, obviously looking at it, it has circulated quite a bit. It's hard to believe that coins like this do circulate uh, because uh, they certainly uh, gain the attention of a lot of people, both non-collectors and collectors of this coin. But $56, hard to go wrong there. Uh, great job for the seller, taking great images and good sale. All right, our first lot of the group of coins today is going to be this trio of uh, Roosevelt Dimes. So I think this is actually a really neat set here. You have a trio, all consecutive dates, 96, 97, and 98. They're all Philadelphia minted, kind of as expected for this type of error. Um, they all seem to be off-center, anywhere from 15 to 20%. Uh, the 97 in the middle seems to be the more dramatic looking coin out of the three based off of that uh, kind of like that flip of the uh, the blank part of the planchet that then gets struck. Um, but all in all, I mean, you know, hard to go wrong with a three coin set like this. And again, I always kind of make people aware that if you're able to find a three coin lot such as this where you can get it at a really good price, 
The idea is you can buy something like this and then flip each coin individually. Um, bulk purchases are usually the way to go on the secondary market if you're looking to flip and make at least double your money. This one, uh, I would say kind of maxed out, you know, uh, sold for $79.95, uh, which puts it at roughly $26.50 per coin. Um, and I think you're probably all tapped out there as far as any other profit uh, possibility. This, was, of course, was sold as a fixed buy it now listing. So uh, the price ceiling was very high. Someone scooped it up. It was a really good sale for the seller. Now here's a coin again, and I stress that this is actually a very common error of the uh, either 80s or 90s. It kind of remains to be seen what uh, date range this particular cud die break exists at uh, because it covers the date, right? We won't know what it is, but it is a Philadelphia minted coin. You can see the P mint right there uh, behind the, uh, the, the little uh, uh, bow on uh, Washington's hair. Uh, but this one right here, you also have that pretty substantial weakness right here, uh, which is common on cut die breaks. And then that cut die break is right here over the date. Uh, this one ended up selling for $44.80. Again, it's a coin that looks like it's circulated by a good deal. And um, even if you found it in this condition, they're worth quite a bit of money. So make sure you're pulling them out. And again, these are quite common out there. Uh, some would say, well, I haven't found one. Well, you're not looking enough. <laughs> if you're if you're a uh, volume quarter hunter, uh, more than likely you have found a few of these. Hey, here's another one right here. This is actually quite a nice example. Uh, I have talked about an 83P Jefferson Nickel cut die break. You can see it right there on the crown of good old uh, Jefferson's head. Uh, but this is one that I've talked about week in, week out. Again, another readily available cut to find out there uh, for all you nickel hunters. Um, this one, however, seems to be really nice. Probably kind of like that lower mint state grade. You have tons of luster left on this. And that's what collectors love. Uh, this one ended up selling for $53.90 with two bids. So there were two people battling out for this one. Now, this is going to be more of a cautionary tale for a lot of you uh, because, you know, you could certainly cherry pick a lot older coins with some of the errors and, and stuff that we see on more modern dates. Kind of like what we highlighted in the first four coins of this particular show. This is in 1862. As you guys know, any date within the Civil War period, which goes from 1861 to 65, are all highly collectible. Now, this coin, before we go into talking about what's going on there on the edge, is actually a really nice condition, um, Civil War date. You know, you have full liberty. I would say it's probably like a VF30, maybe a 35. Um, it's a very honest looking coin, with exception of what that little scratch is on half dime on the reverse. Um, but this one right here actually has a little bit of a ragged clip. And at first I thought it was just damaged, like someone had filed it or something. But after taking a close look, um, this one certainly has the, the ragged fissure type of edge um, that is indicative of that end of strip cut. Now, uh, this coin right here, uh, very honest, I, I would say aside from that scratch, is a pretty nice uh, type coin. But, you know, with uh, what I consider to be a low end error type, uh, you know, these clips and laminations and things like that. Um, sometimes it is actually a detriment to the coin's value, especially when it comes to these much older type coins. This one ended up selling for $39.50 with three bids. I have a feeling that if that Fisher clip, ragged clip thing wasn't there, I would say this would probably be a $60 to $70 coin because it is a Civil War dated, a very original example. All right, back to moderates with a 1988P Washington Quarter. Now, this one is actually quite spectacular. At first glance, it looks like it's off-center, and you could possibly say that it is a great off-center struck example. All right, some would say, well, it's an uncentered broad strike as well. You have lots of devices left on the edge of the coin there. Um, and it could be the case, you know, it's a, it's a rather um, minimal offset of this particular error, so you could go either way, but 
Um, when you look at the edge, you can see partial reading, and that can only mean one thing. This is actually a partial tilted collar. You can see that plainly right there. Very nice specimen. Um, let's see. Yeah, there you go. Size difference-wise, uh, the 88P is slightly bigger than a standard quarter. The seller did a really good job comparing the two, and this one ended up selling for $19.30. Not a rare error, but it's nice to know that these coins command this kind of market out there. All right, our good old pal Jim on eBay uh, with another heavy hitter, a 1947S. Uh, it's a very nice minty fresh coin, lots of mint red. Uh, it looks pretty lustrous as well under certain conditions there, but... Yeah, you know, the early Lincolns are a uh, just a treasure trove of double dies and repunch mint marks, as you would guess. This one is RPM number two. You can see that the secondary S is north of the primary mint mark. You can see that extra curl of the top of the S poking through there. Uh, this one ended up selling for $14.95, where the coin on its own is normally like $0.50 cents to a dollar. They're very common, very readily available if you needed to pick one up, say, for a uh, for a Lincoln cent set that's a little bit more higher grade, or for a type coin. Our first piece of currency today is going to be this 1958 $20 bill. Now, as you can see, it looks like it's miscut, but if you look even deeper, you'll find that the two different printings on here are quite misaligned from each other. But which one is more misaligned than the other? Well, if you looked at the, the first print, which is this underprint with the 20s and all that stuff, this is seems to be way misaligned to the left on that sheet. Uh, the third print, which encompasses all the district seals and serial numbers, are in the right positioning for that piece of paper, for that note. Um, so we can deduce that the first printing is quite a bit misaligned to the left. And with that being said, you do have a, a certain areas of the note where the first and third print are overlapping. Uh, again, those are hot points for collectors. Um, the note in itself is a uh, pretty high grade, but even the back print is also misaligned as well. Um, kind of hard to say if, it, if it's more misaligned or if, if it's just a, a true miscut where it's actually a little bit bigger size note. Kind of hard to say. Uh, but yeah, this thing circulated quite a bit. Uh, this one ended up selling for 40 bucks. Uh, again, that played more to the condition than anything else. But this one is a much nicer example. In 1990, uh, again, a little bit, it's uh, the what we call the small head notes, uh, which is the pre-colorized, pre-modified you know, uh, artistic renderings um, that we see today. But this one right here looks like it was discovered very early on. Now, on the front of the note, there's really nothing that will grab you, okay, as far as uh, you know, dramatic or anything like that. Um, but on the back, get a little of that. Uh, we actually have what we call a solvent smear, uh, part of the BEP printing process. Uh, you just have an over-concentration of some of that ink um, that is smeared across that area there. Uh, you know, it's, it's very nice, very dramatic, and uh, very highly collected. Uh, you can even see certain areas like here where it says 20 with some of that you know, solvent smear as well. Uh, this one ended up selling. For $127 through 7 bids. Not too shabby. That's a really good amount of money for this note. And even if it was graded, it would probably sell for that around that same amount of money. All right, good to find this one again. Uh, it's been a few days since we've seen a Tuskegee Airmen strike through quarter. Uh, of course, this was like the big talk of the town last year. However... Again, this is a prototypical example of a coin um, that circulates. I mean, the coin is not a high-end example. You see all of the, the pitting on there. Uh, it looks like it was found on the ground somewhere. It's also got this uh, pretty nice uh, rim gash uh, on the edge along with a few other areas. So it's not a pretty coin. This thing is uh, um, quite beat up. And, uh, you know, these used to sell for between two and $300 in mint state condition. So... With that being said, where does one that grades out like this fall? Well, I'm happy to say that this one still managed to squeak out $143.50 with 17 total bids. So someone 
obviously looking for a little bit more bargain example of this very expensive error, has found it in this one. All right, another piece of currency. We got a few of them this uh, on this particular episode, whereas the last PCMR show, we had none, all right? I think that was more by design. I avoided currency last week and kept it all coins, but here you go. We're back to it with this beautiful 1977 $1 bill. Um, you can see some of that reverse print on the front of the note. They call this a back-to-front wet ink transfer. Um it's just it's a really cool error and uh they, they are one of the more common ones to find out there uh, you could find a partial uh which overlaps the blue black inking on the front of the note and vice versa uh, those can be a little bit it can be a little bit tougher to spot uh, especially when they're a little bit more worn but this is a pretty nice example i would say it's about 50 percent um of that transfer uh, again when these notes are printed okay the sheets don't dry out immediately so when you have wet sheet upon wet sheet stacking on top of each other you're gonna get a little bit of the transfer onto those subsequent notes um, one thing to keep in mind with a transfer is that the transferred image is going to be backwards okay if it's not backwards it's probably not legit we've seen a few of those in the past this one sold for $64.38 with two bids and there's a back of the note for you showing that there's no folds on here. This is just a really nice crisp example. Now this one's a little bit tough to uh, to really discern uh, because of how pixelated it is. The, the picture, the overall picture quality of the original seller was not very good. All right, so this is what we got going on here. But this one, right off the bat, it's got a note with problems. So it's got a little bit of a tear chunk piece hanging right there. Um, yes, it is a silver certificate. This is actually a 57, uh, but this one has a really neat error. Okay, the um, uh, they actually used the uh, the wrong uh, die for the prefix letter, uh, which are both M's. All right, this is the standard M right here with the squared off edges of the M, uh, but they used an upside down W die for the printing uh, plate on this particular one. Um, so you can see that there is a little bit of a taper on the M. And I know it's kind of hard to see because of the overall image quality on this. Um, but I, I saw this. I'm like, yep, that's the one. And generally, these are very well coveted in the market. And you just don't see a lot of them. But I think this was because of its condition, because of the tear, this one really got knocked down to peg. Uh, but all in all, still a great note to find out there. This one sold for $23.79 with nine bids i've seen problem free kind of like vf examples sell for a few hundred bucks so um yeah another note to look out for um also uh the 1935 series of silver certificates will have the uh uh the, the also the the uh the w prefix on some of those notes where they used an upside down m so it's gonna be squared off that's another good one to look out for as well now, this is probably something you don't see on a daily basis. It's an 1863 Civil War token. Now, more than likely, you're going to be able to cherry pick something like this, you know, at a coin shop or a show and probably less finding it in a roll of coin. Uh, I'll be honest with you. Uh, but this is the infamous uh, shoot him on the spoot error. OK, they inadvertently um, spelt spot right with an extra O. Now, there is a corrected version that's spelled S-P-O-T. Um, that's worth a lot less money. But this one right here with the double O, the Spoot uh, Civil War token, is uh, it probably is worth about 2 to 3x in value compared to a standard uncorrected version, or a corrected version, rather. Um, this one ended up selling for $79.25 with 13 bits. Another good one to be on the lookout for. Now, this one's really cool. 1944 P. Jefferson Nickel. As you guys know, this is the wartime silver nickel era uh, from 42 to 45. And the way you can tell is that they have that big giant mint mark on the reverse above the dome of Monticello. But check out what's going on on the front of the coin. Um, yeah, look at that. A, a pretty nice attached lamination. You got multi, multiple levels of this uh, event on the coin and uh yeah don't try so hard to flip these things up to make it dramatic because surprisingly 
yeah, these things fall off pretty easily. Uh, it's like folding aluminum. Uh, you know, it doesn't take much for it to uh, shear off and tear. Um, but this is really cool. Very dramatic coin. Um, it, you know, it, based off of the images, I think the seller did a really good job illustrating this. And this one sold for $29.50. Keep in mind, the earlier dates of Jefferson Nichols had lamination issues left and right. Um, this is, while this is a very advanced um, attached lamination, other lesser laminations are, are certainly uh, more common, but yet would still sell for like 5 to 15 bucks. Yeah, so uh, yeah, if you can see it, this is a 2005P uh, Oregon Statehood Quarter. I know it's kind of hard to tell because the images are really bad, but um, what's even more miraculous is that the seller actually knocked it out of the park with the close-ups. That normally doesn't happen, but we've seen this before on a few occasions. Um, this one has just this giant, you know, cud. I, I mean, it, it's nice. And they, these are actually uh, uh, quite common uh, on uh, Oregon's, West Virginia's, Colorado's, statehood quarters. And they all seem to fall in like that 2005 era, 2006. Uh, there's even the South Dakota uh, cud as well. That's quite nice. And they all seem to be like this size. Um, they're all, again, all quite common, very available. They'll pop up when you least expect it to. They're all on Philadelphia minted statehoods of that era. And this one sold for 14 bucks. Not bad given its current condition and crappy photos. Now here's a coin that I'm sure a lot of you have come across. 1960D. This is the large date. See that longer tail of the six pointing upwards. Yeah, this is the one, but this is also the date where you could find uh, oodles of very nice, really cool varieties. Uh, lots of repunchment marks, especially. Uh, you could see the secondary S's a little bit west of the primary, maybe more southwest than west. Uh, but just really cool. Uh, this is a good one to find here, and it sold for $23.45 with 8 bids. That's a tremendous find. And again, keep an eye out for those 1960D RPMs. Now, our subject coin of the day or the show is going to be actually this one here, 2005P um, Jefferson Nickel with the Bison Reverse. Uh, of course, this has actually come to be a little bit of a favorite among collectors and uh, people just really like the design. It's a little bit of a throwback of the old Buffalo Nickels from 1913 to 38, so it's understandable why they would, you know, uh, revisit this. I think it's a cool uh, subject coin. Uh, but as you can see, this one has rotated dies by 90 degrees. And I said and stated in my thumbnail that about 99% of uh, treasure hunters and coin roll hunters overlook something like this because they don't flip the coin over. You would be surprised um, how many of these get overlooked. And um, if you guys have checked out your Strike Your Rich with Pocket Change books, Check out the number and the myriad of dates from 2000 or maybe the mid 90s, somewhere around there, all the way up to about 2010. There are a lot of rotated die errors. Um, there's even been uh, a few newly uh, found examples of 2020 and 2021 rotated die nickel varieties or errors rather that you need to look out for. They're all worth like a solid 75 to 100 bucks. This one right here ended up bringing home $103.49 with 23 bids. Such a blockbuster of a coin. Keep an eye out for these and look at every date of nickel that you get during this era. This is just a pretty cool, nice coin. 1955S Lincoln Wheat Set. Uh, we do have a little bit of a strike through on the reverse. So that was also added to the listing. Uh, but most importantly, this one is a BIE die chip. You can see that die chip connecting the B and E in Liberty. Always a popular collected coin. Uh, and this one sold for, believe it or not, $20.45 with 11 bids. That's usually about double the market. But I think because uh, of how clean the coin is, this one commanded a little bit extra. Now, this is no 55S in terms of quality, but 1919 with a little bit of a lamination issue on the operas of the coin. And furthermore, it's a really nice, cool, woody, 
what grain appearance coin, uh, which is caused by an improper alloy mix of the copper and tin that's in these. Now, the amount of tin is so negligible, but if it's not mixed in properly with that copper, you're going to get the streaking that you see here, which turns out to be a really neat effect, and collectors love them. Uh, this one ended up selling for $8.45. Again, you know, that's more of a byproduct of the overall condition of the coin. And of course, I mean, this is a prototypical key, right? The 1922 plain Lincoln Wheat Scent. Uh, it's not a beauty, that's for sure. But if you guys remember, these are all minted in the Denver facility. There were no Philadelphia minted 22s produced. So uh, obviously we have like, you know, like a filled die issue because there are weak D variants of this coin. Uh, but this one right here, the mint mark is completely missing. So it's a true blue 22 plane. And they all look weakly struck like this. Now, there are exceptions. There are various dies you need to be on the lookout for. Uh, this one, above all else, is probably the least desirable because it's got the weak reverse die. Uh, you can just tell just how mushy it is. You know, it's got no, uh, no you know, uplifting design details that pop out of there. Um, this one, believe it or not, in this condition, sold for a good chunk of money, $340.45 uh, with 52 bids. Quite quite a bit of activity on this one. Of course, when you're looking for an entry-level 22 plane, there's not a whole lot out there. You are going to spend a few hundred bucks just to get one that looks even like this. Another good variety to find, this is the 39 Jefferson Nickel with doubled Monticello on the reverse. You can even see it here uh, without going too close. You can see the doubled L's and O's and all that stuff. You can see it at five cents. Uh, just a great coin. This, this is a hitless coin among coin roll hunters and other various treasure hunters alike. Um, yeah, and uh, I mean, it's not a high-end graded piece, but it's one that if you need one for your collection just to have, um, you could do a lot worse. This one sold for $31.73 with nine bids. Up next, we have a 2000P Roosevelt dime. Now, as you can tell, the front of the coin looks very copper hued, and it is. Uh, keep in mind, this is a mint state coin. Uh, this coin obviously uh, does not have a clad layer, uh, so that nickel layer on the obverse of the coin missing, but. Um, this is also in a grossly underweight coin, weighing only 1.89 grams. Uh, so even losing that clad layer certainly made the difference on this one. Uh, this one sold for $55. That was a buy it now offered uh, listing uh, with a best offer auction uh, option, I guess. And uh, yeah, the uh, the seller ended up settling for $50 plus $5 shipping on this. Uh, so there you go. Not bad for an uncertified piece. Uh, and there's a uh, quick look at the edge of a normal dime and the dime in question. You can see just the overall uh, thickness difference from one to the other. Right, here's the talk of the town uh, of the last, I would say, two months. Uh, this is the 2021 Lincoln Shield Scent with uh, a pretty nice die crack. Uh, this is actually what they call the stage one of what is eventually going to be the fully uh, fully functional retained cud. Uh, I've talked about this. Maybe you guys heard about my video of 2021 Lincoln scent rolls I went through a few weeks back. Pretty big deal. Uh, so this is the earliest progression of this particular coin. Uh, this one ended up selling for $128.50 through 20 bits, uh, which is a really nice kind of like amount of money for this. Uh, you know, it, it is nearly a bisecting, a bisecting crack uh, that goes rim to rim. Uh, just a very, very nice dramatic example. Now across the border from our friends up north, we have this 1964 Canadian uh, penny. Uh, this is actually sold by uh, someone that I am, oh, I, I don't know personally. Uh, he goes by SPP Ottawa. He actually is one of the uh, uh, the big time error collectors uh, up in Canada. Uh, he, he's also, you know, if you wanted to chat with him, he, he's on a few of the uh, Canadian coin sites, uh, forum chat pages rather. Um, but he's been doing this for years. Uh, this is a coin from his 
uh, own personal uh, inventory. And it's a really nice 64 that's off center by, I would say, like 10%. Uh, but Canadian errors are big business. Um, compared to U.S. coin errors of the same type, these generally sell for about 2 to 3x of what a uh, similar, I guess, U.S. coin would sell for of the same date. This one ended up selling for 60 bucks Canadian. So uh, SPP um, accepted an offer of 60 Canadian on this one. Now, you don't really see too many of these ungraded, but this is a 1920 Buffalo nickel with problems. You can see all the scrapes and nicks on this coin. It's, it's definitely a details coin, but it's a 1920S. Uh, there's actually a mint mark right there, and... Uh, Fortunately, it was off-center enough that that was still on there. Um, this is off-center by about 10%. And off-center anything on any obsolete coin from Buffalo Nickels to Mercury Dimes to Standing Liberty Quarters, which are very rare, by the way, are all quite desirable. And they've gone up um, in price exponentially just within the last 15 to 20 years, I would say. Uh, this one sold for $90.80 with four bids, considering that this one has a lot of uh, the scrapes and stuff on there. I'd say that's a really solid buy. Real simple here. We just have a hand-assembled full roll of 1979S Susan B. Anthony's, uh, kind of like the redheaded stepchild, kind of not even semi. I wouldn't even consider this a semi-key date, but... Um, yeah, this is definitely a lower mintage uh, coin. Uh, these are all produced as circulation strikes. So you can certainly find S minted SBAs pretty easily. This is actually just a $25 face roll. Uh, no glitz, no glamour. Uh, that ended up selling for $39.50. All right, another cool one here, 1953S Lincoln Wheat Scent, another really good RPM to look out for. Uh, this is actually a uh, very nice RPM. I found quite a few of these, but you can see just a, a tilting fashion of the S. You have an extra top uh, serif or whatever of the S right here. That actually is really close to touching the five. Um, this one right here, again, not a high-end graded example. Uh, sold for $11.26. With 14 bids. Not too shabby on this one. This might be the last piece of currency for today, but we have this 1985 $10 bill. Again, another small head. And uh, yeah, a gutter fold as well. Pretty neat. Uh, going through both the first and third prints of this particular one, uh, gutter folds are caused when there is a wrinkle in the sheet that hadn't been stretched out uh, prior to the printing process. Um, so it got printed over that, that little fold or wrinkle, and then when you stretch it out, you have this really neat effect here. Uh, kind of like some grade school art project, right? Uh, but yeah, uh, you know, this one does have a little bit of a, a teller ink run here, um, which is how they mark it when it's in a strap. Um, but yeah, just a really nice, uh, decent example of this note. The reverse, as you can tell, uh, show, shows very nicely. This one sold for $195, uh, which is pretty pretty good considering that um, this is a, a much more desirable gutter fold because it runs horizontally left to right. A lot of the, it gets more minor gutters are the vertical ones that go up and down. Uh, so that's why this one commanded the kind of money it did. Otherwise, it would probably have been like a $75 note. Hey, here's just a solid 1999D. Hey, a Denver off-center strike. Uh, this one's about off-center, about, about 50, 55%. And uh, it's in really nice shape. Uh, you can see the mint luster there. So, uh, you know, this one was probably caught very early on in an old, you know, Jefferson Nickel um, bag, uh, which is normally where you would find one of these. This one sold for $19.99. Again, you have a full date and mint mark, and that's what matters to collectors of this type. Okay, well, I, this is my one per video kind of like PSA to all of the roll hunters out there who do half dollars. If you're not looking for these guys, come on. You guys are driving me up the wall. Uh, with the 72D Kennedy half dollar, this is, of course, as you guys know, the missing FG initials reverse. Um, all, again, a byproduct of a, a braided die. A little bit of overzealous polishing with that aluminum oxide cloth. 
and then you have the FG initials for Frank Gasparo that is missing right here. Um, yeah, it's not there. This is one of the uh, the key dates for the missing FG initials. Of course, you got 82P, 83P as well, and I believe 72, or maybe it was 71. It's one of those dates, but yeah, look out for this because uh, if you're just looking for that good old 90% silver or 40 percenter, uh, this one actually will surprise the heck out of you. Uh, sold for $11.50 with three bids. By the time you factor in uh, shipping and uh, fees to pay eBay, you're probably going to profit about 9 bucks on this. Hey, that ain't bad. That's like finding a 90% silver half. Well, here's another good one, this time a 56D. No, not in RPM, but take a look at the reverse. Uh, we have a uh, delamination issue. You can see that right there on the reverse uh, between k12 and k4 or somewhere around there uh really nice uh, i mean it does have some crud on the auburn so that you also have to contend with uh but this one ended up selling for twelve dollars and two cents with 10 bids again laminations are heating up really cool uh struck through capped die uh but also with a little twist here on this non date no date Lincoln. Uh, it's also a partial uh, mirrored brockage. Uh, you can see a little bit of the uh, the reverse design of the Lincoln Memorial all stretched out as a result of that cap die being used a few times on there. Uh, but yeah, late stage brockage on this one. Uh, sold for $89.50 with 13 bids. All right, here's another one, I believe from the same seller as the 99D that we saw, but this is the 87 Philadelphia, Jefferson Nickel, again, off center by about 50%, uh, might be somewhere plus or minus 5%. Uh, another good good one, and much tougher date than it looks. Sold for $32.85 uh, with 13 bids, pretty good. All right, this one, courtesy of a new eBay seller. Good job even finding this one. And again, proving once again that it doesn't matter how beat up some of these coins are. Um, they still have some sort of desirability in the marketplace. Another one of those missing date cuts on Washington Quarter. You can see the uh, the weakness on the reverse. Um, but looking at the overall general condition of the coin, I, I don't know if this is damage or adhesive here on Washington's neck. That's something to take note. Uh, not a not a beautiful coin by any stretch, but if you have it, sell it. If if it's like you know something that you don't need in your collection because of the way it looks or you don't collect cud errors, uh, this is a good one to sell anytime you want to. Uh, this one ended up selling for eighty three dollars and twenty one cents with four bits. Um, this one I believe is a little bit earlier date because it has no mint mark. So pre what nineteen eighty. Uh, so this is probably from the seventies. Well, it was bound to happen guys. We have our first, uh, confirmed minor error, uh, on 2022 coins this time on the Maya Angelou 2022, uh, quarter. And, uh, this is a Philadelphia minted example as well. So if you guys are on the East coast, Oh, man, be on the lookout. I'm sure there's going to be much more major stuff. But uh, before we get into the close-ups, this actually cracks me up. Just go ahead and read some of the data on the 2x2 two two flip here. We got little boogie nose happening. Uh, we have a few die chips, which we'll take a look at. Oh, dirty mouth, man. Um, yeah, dirty, dirty mouth with the boogie nose. Uh, so what does he have? Maybe a little bit of a cold, right? Um, but upon closer examination, you got a little bit of a die chip under this second two of the date. And I was talking to someone on our Q&A panel. I'm like, how crazy would it be if it was the year 2,222? Uh, a coin with all twos on it, I think would just be absolutely nuts. Uh, but this one right here, the dirty mouth die chip. Man, we definitely have to wipe up that food after we eat, you know. Uh, it's not a good look. But yeah, there's little die chips and stuff popping up on here. Um, and yeah, the first one to market, this one ended up selling for a, a rather gracious $14.95. It doesn't seem like a lot, but you know, again, this is a very minor error on this coin. So again, first to the market, you, you get to kind of set the rules and 15 bucks. I'll take this all day long. 
But if you think we're going to end the show on something like this, oh boy, guys, think again. How about a record-priced 2021 retained cud Lincoln sent error. All right. Again, this is the much more advanced stage. I would say this is a stage four because you have only the first two uh, numbers in the date that's showing here. But yeah, this is the big one, guys. I had mentioned that this is a coin in uh, problem free that sold for five to seven hundred dollars. We've had a few sales. The one you're seeing here is, of course, the, the, the biggest record amount thus far. And this is sold. Within the last like day, day and a half, uh, this particular specimen sold for, get this, $850. Wow. Um, there was also another one that sold for $750, another that sold for $765, all within the last like 48 hours. Three examples have sold in that kind of realm. Again, another big one. Yeah, 2022s are going to be dropping and they have been dropping in certain areas. But that doesn't mean you can't find these. So take some time. Go ahead and check out your local uh, banks, uh, especially on, anywhere on the East Coast. I know these were heavily concentrated in Virginia. Uh, but people have found these in New York, Indiana, and North Carolina as well. So uh, just a few other states to uh, you know kind of consider when you're searching for these. Uh, just a beautiful coin. Just a very impactful, modern uh, error rarity out there um, that I feel like is not going to last too long. Uh, what, once the first wave hits and it's all come and gone, yeah, you're not going to see too many premier examples of this coin in high grades. Um, certainly take advantage of it. The money is huge. Uh, will it hit $1,000? Oh, man, I hope it does. That would be awesome. Uh, but, yeah, that's a great way to finish out this uh, PCMR report for Sunday out of all times. I'm your host, Sean, with Blue Ridge Silverhound. I want to thank each and every single one of you for joining in today. It sure was a pleasure to take down, to, you know, to take a trip down, uh, you know, the coin world road. A um, lot of great stuff to find out there. And, you know, would love to hear your thoughts. Did you have a favorite for this week? But that's going to go ahead and do it. Don't forget to do all three of the things you see on screen. Uh, and again, Coinaholics, we are discovering together. You guys take care. Have a great day. So long.